The search has ended for 41 year old Jamie Mohammed, the superior woman who disappeared on October 18th after leaving a bar with two men. Her body was found in a cocoa plantation along Maury Trace. Her body was mostly included and found in a position that indicated that Mohammed was assaulted before her death. Her top and pink running shoes were the same when witnesses saw her leaving the bar with two men. Police were unable to identify the two men because they were unable to receive the CCTV footage. Condolences goes out to her family. This is the thing about Trinidad and Tobago. If this was a big shot, the police would have made sure to get that CCTV footage. The rapists and murderers roaming freely around Trinidad and Tobago. People, please be careful. But someone know these men. Someone in that bar self know these men. And these men need to be brought to justice. You all let me know what you all think about this story. And ladies, please be careful out here. Especially when you're going on Lime alone. Currently, 1,120 police officers have been issued body cameras to use on the job. However, they have not all been used as required. Minister of National Security Fitzgerald Hines said that these cameras will be issued to second division officers in charge of the station or section. He said that these cameras will be securely stored in the station's compound. Before each patrol, the senior officer will check the body one camera to make sure that it is fully charged and operational. Officers are not allowed to make any repairs to the body worn camera system. Any malfunction, loss, or damage of the body worn camera must be immediately reported to the station supervisor. Also, the police academy will do training on the body worn camera at least once a year. The body worn camera must be placed on record mode as soon as the officer is dispatched on patrol. Just want to ask a few questions here. How long does it take for citizens to get access to the body worn camera footage? of police officers just in case of any discrepancies also what are some of the penalties that an officer would incur if his body worn camera supposedly turns off or malfunctions during a sensitive time of an arrest who would be reviewing this footage would it be reviewed daily and would it be reviewed by other officers or would they have a third party involved let me just be frank we all know it's a friend thing in the police service and people will look out for each other would there be a third party reviewing the footage? Because we all know that there is corruption going on in the front lines. But what we don't know is the corruption that's going on in the station. Right? So who would be reviewing this footage? I just want to ask. So y'all let me know. Do y'all think that these body worn cameras will keep the police on the straight and narrow? Or do y'all think that there are other circumstances that could actually, you know, pay them off course still? Y'all let me know. A two month old baby narrowly escaped death when gunmen killed his father who was sleeping in bed next to him and his mother. Police said that 24-year-old Mark Harilal and his family retired to bed around 11.30 p.m. However, at 12.05 a.m., his wife was woken up to heavy gunfire next to her in bed. To her horror, she found Harilal motionless in bed, bleeding from a gunshot wound to his head. Condolences goes out to him and his family. Lord Father, it's time to take the wheels of Trinidad and Tobago because God knows our leaders cannot handle it. I want you all just to think about something for a minute. Think about all the children that had to grow up without fathers and mothers because of the crime situation in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, all they want to raise all their salary and I have no problem with that, you know. Once all they serve any people at Trinidad and Tobago and you all are not doing that. So could you all justify all their salary raise? And I will say it again. In 2015, Dr. Keith Rowley was one of the most vocal voices when it came to crime. It's 2024. And you're quiet like a church mouse. What happened? And that's to show you. It's not only some of these citizens of Trinidad and Tobago that have gotten cold hearted you know. Our leaders have also gotten cold hearted as well. Now you let me know what you all think. Police shot and killed a man in a Rangues yesterday. Shortly after he and two other men robbed the Blue Waters delivery truck. Around noon, officers responded to a robbery around Arangues main road. While on the scene, officers were told that the bandits attempted to escape in a silver-colored Nissan AD wagon. Officers intercepted the vehicle heading south on Arangues Main Road and a chase ensued. Police said that two of the three men pulled out guns and fired upon the police. The police responded with gunfire, shooting two of the bandits. However, the third escaped. One of the bandits died in the exchange of gunfire with the police, leaving him the 50th person for the year to be killed by police. Now this story was very detailed and this would be the perfect situation where the police could actually show the citizens the body cam footage to show us how this technology really works in real time. Y'all will let me know what y'all think. 
the Prime Minister is making it clear that his government will not be devaluing the Trinidad and Tobago dollar. This is a suggestion as a possible solution to reduce the demand in US dollars. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said that the Finance Minister is currently meeting with stakeholders to determine the reasons for the increase in the foreign exchange demand. He said devaluation will only seek self-interest as it would result in an increase in costs, leaving those with foreign exchange wealthier as they would receive more TT dollars. Now that will happen because you closed on Petrotrin, which was one of our main earners of foreign exchange. Now you're trying to sell the refinery and you're getting problems because the opposition find a problem with whoever you want to sell it to. And it's a constant cycle of this foolishness going on in this country. This country have enough land to produce agriculture in a massive way. And maybe we had to start back going back to basics. So let me know y'all think, should we get back into cocoa production? Should we get back into sugar cane, rice? You know, should get back into agriculture in general. Because if that oil money dry up today, crap will smoke our pipe. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Residents of Faisabad are urging the police to investigate whether the murder of Syrian businessman Mutar Nazar was linked to extortion. Nazar, who was 49 years old, was shot dead while conducting business at his food outlet in Faisabad. Residents said that of recent time, businessmen were being targeted by extortionists in Faisabad. One resident said that he was inside when he heard four gunshots. He described Nazar as being soft-spoken and a hard-working businessman. He also described Nazar's killing as a hit. ACP Richard Smith, this is up your alley. You said that you had all the information, all the intel on the gangs involved in this extortion ring. Since then, we haven't seen any arrests. We saw you follow any minister around Shagonas, but we haven't seen any arrests. And now we may have lost a life due to extortion. What are you and the minister going to do now? Walk around Faisabad? This is not what we need. We need action. We need arrests. You all see that extortionists will get 15 years in prison, right? But how they could get 15 years in prison if they are not arrested? This is the problem. We have a problem in this country where criminals are not being arrested, right? It's just intel, intel, intel. You all always have intel. Never arresting anybody with the intel though. So let me know what you all think. Do you all think if the police sleep on this extortion ring that they will only get stronger and become a problem for the police in the future? You all let me know what you all think. The missing man who was found dead in the Karani River has been identified as Damien Nurse. His bloated and decomposing body was found among the reeds, welded around some broken branches in the vicinity of the Karani Bridge. He was described as a humble person who also suffered with epilepsy. No foul play has been ruled out as the matter is still being investigated. In other news, five officers from the Northern Division Task Force were acquitted of misbehavior in public office and extortion. The charges were dismissed yesterday after the prosecution failed to present sufficient evidence linking the officers to the allegations. The officers were accused of soliciting $30,000 in cash and five pounds of marijuana from a couple during a search of their home. The dismissal of this case follows the dismissal of another high-profile case where seven officers from Sandy Grandy were accused of corruption. No matter who you are in this country or where you fall on the political landscape, you must admit that whatever is going on in the police service in Trinidad and Tobago is scary. Just even talking about this situation or giving my opinion is scary because to me, the police in this country are worse than the gangs. So all let me know, what do you all think about the Trinidad and Tobago police service? Do you all think that they are corrupted and do they need to be revamped? You all let me know. A second decomposing body was found in the Karine River for this week. Police said the second decomposing body, said to be that of a female, was found around 7 a.m. by the Hunter Search and Rescue Team. The Hunter Search and Rescue Team was called in after police officers received information that the body was in the river. The woman's body was discovered two kilometers west of the Karani Bridge. Her body was trapped between debris and branches in the river. In other news, a 69-year-old man was found dead after being abducted by three Spanish-speaking men from his home. His lifeless body was found in the backseat of his car that was parked along the roadside of the Solomon Hotchoy Highway. Police said he suffered at least one stab wound to the head. Also in the news, the son of a businessman from Enterprise Chagonas was abducted yesterday afternoon. Police said that Anand Rampasal was grabbed and bundled into a vehicle by two gunmen as he went to drop off some gravel at a job site. It is not yet known if a ransom was demanded but police are currently searching the Chagonas area for the businessman's son.
when are we going to admit that this government has failed us on crime you know look at the road we're going down you can't even have a business nowadays right but come election they'll pave a few roads and we'll be back to waving in the rallies again the cycle keep going on and on you all let me know what you all think about this a Kuiper Chima man was burnt beyond recognition after his BMW flipped and burst into flames yesterday morning. 25-year-old Nicholas Bassoon died in the accident that happened around 3.15 a.m. along the Churchill Roosevelt Highway close to El Sicoro. He was driving his white BMW east along the highway when his car crashed into a concrete barrier. Eyewitnesses said that the car flipped multiple times before bursting into flames with Bassoon trapped inside. Condolences goes out to his family and guys, as the holiday approaches, please be careful on the nation's roads. Can we see how quick an incident like this could take a life? So guys, remember to love, care and cherish each other. Enjoy your Sunday, guys. Bring back the old time days Bring back them old time ways to feel nice didn't need no paradise now open your eyes look around smoke in the city and what was pretty crying out for sympathy so bring back the old time days bring back them old